so back when I met Robert, you know, and, I, uh, and I'm making my own uh, tapes and I was making the transition from tape to CD, the, how I found that out, because there was these other CDs that came out. There was, um, like I said, Toker's Oldies and Soulful Things. So we were like picking our brain out, like, how are these oldies on CD? Like, it's not this stuff you would hear on the tape, but it's on CD. How the fuck did it end up on CD? So I remember digging through the Discoveries magazine and digging through the... Um, Goldmine magazine, I'm stumbling across the pages and I see an ad in the paper and it says, transform your tape onto CD. And I'm like, bingo, what the fuck, hell yeah. Like everything was just working in my favor, right? I'm like, I, I wanted to do this. I wanted to make a CD and the answer was right there. So, I, and how crazy, trip out on this, this is even crazier, like almost like destiny. So I, I look at the ad, right? And this ad, this magazine has ads from all over the country, right? About New York, Pittsburgh, Chicago. I, I look at the ad because I'm calling the number and I look at the address in the ad and the place was called V Corporation. I'll never forget it. It was V Corporation, transfer your CDs to, to tape. I mean, transfer your tape to CDs. I said that backwards. I look at the number and it's like six, it's like 626 and I'm like, Holy, and I look at the address and it's like something, 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 Covina app in Covina. And I'm like, what the? Fuck? Like, I literally felt like like God like, was helping me that much. It, it may sound stupid and crazy and unbelievable, but I swear, like, I get the goosebumps thinking about it. Like, I literally felt like a prayer got answered and like it was so close to home. Like, man, like, like it couldn't be more on a silver platter for me, man, like, to find this place. To transfer my tape onto CD and it's right here in Covina. Like, what were the odds of that? Me, we had that friendship for a while now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting Robert, I'm making my CDs, and I'm visiting him and I'm just buying basically records of him because that's kind of like how, that's kind of how he introduced, that was like how he introduced himself to me. Like, oh, you know, we're cool and all, I'm glad to meet you, but you know, I'm, I want to sell you records. You know, I'm here to sell you records. That was like his MO to me, you know. Um, so, you know, I had that buying record mentality you know uh relationship with him uh buying crazy records so he, he started coming over to my house with the box of records and he was selling me some heavy shit man shit i never heard that he turned me on to like i remember buying the citations hey mr love for 50 bucks off robert ramos i remember him coming to my house and and he sold me the, the disciples of soul peekaboo for 50 bucks mint he sold me the fabulous performers on blackjack for like 50 bucks and 50 bucks was a lot of money for a sweet soul record because sweet soul records were typically 10 to 20 bucks for but these were special sweet soul records to hear that kind of music in 1995 96 was just mind-blowing like what what is this like what the it, i mean you knew it was oldies but it was just a whole different level of music and robert was selling me these records so what ended up happening was you know, I started buying a lot of crazy, like when I had you baby, the soul sensations, like that was like a $10 record back then. And you know, just those kind of records, you know, like Tony and the Hearts, you know, um, you know, um, those kind of records is what I was buying from Robert and I had never heard of him in my life. So as time goes on, um, I remember Robert invites me to this oldies concert, you know, like I said, I didn't know it then, but I found out later that Robert was a part of this underground oldies compilation thing. This whole time I'm talking to him, I didn't really know what he was doing in the background. He didn't really like talk about it for whatever reason. I have no idea to this day. But I remember he's like, "Hey man, you want to go see the the you want to go see Bloodstone and and, and, and Barbara May?" I'm like, "Yeah, you know, like how much?" And he's like, "Oh no, I got you, I got you, like backstage passes and all that." I'm like, "How?" Later on, he reveals to me like, "Oh yeah, like I throw these concerts, by the way. Like I'm I'm with I'm with ITP, and I'm with Alan Beck, and we you know we tour, we tour the um, the nation, and we throw like concerts, Slastic and Wicked, and the Superbs, and Barbara Mason, and you know Bloodstone. I'm just like what? So I finally learned who he is." And this is like Rob, like, he's, yeah, man, those underground oldie compilations, like, that's, that's been me. You know, that, I was the one who did underground oldies, you know. Um, 
and underground like like i said underground oldies was like this huge national distribution like rare oldies compilation man and, and to find out that like i've been talking to the mecca of the oldies world was just insane and um Aside from Rob, so at this point, you know, I'm, I'm introduced to Robert, and Robert has also another partner that is just as knowledgeable, if not more knowledgeable than Robert, who's older. Robert's really good friend at the time was uh, a guy, a man named Sal Rodriguez, uh, Mr. Chavo. And at the time, Sal Rodriguez was doing his old compilation CDs called the City of Angels. Uh, really obscure, like stuff, stuff that was just changing. It was changing the dynamics of the older world as those CDs were releasing, and and so I so now you have tokers, soulful things, um, as far as like heavy, rare, sweet soul, lost and found, volume one. So now months go by, and I remember I made volume two of Lost and Found, and volume two of Lost and Found. If you compare my volume one of Lost and Found to my volume two of Lost and Found. It's like a night and day difference. Like, here's volume one with like Eddie Holman, Mary Wells, Billy Stewart, Donnie Albert. Like, you know, you're, you're run of the mill kind of, you know, Dalphonics. You're kind of like run of the mill common groups, but rare songs, but still kind of run of the mill stuff. Now you see my volume two of Lost and Found, and it's like, the sensations when they had your baby citations hey mr love fabulous performers on blackjack the superbs on fucking uh on altine um the ambers baby i need you on new art like all these records i was buying from robert so my next volume i had some i had a stack of fucking firepower you know i had all these crazy rare soul records and i released lost and found volume two and nothing really hit the scene aside from underground oldies and soulful things and tokers when volume two lost and found came out that thing had such a crazy sweet soul sound to it like the, the music on there like if you look it up man lost and found volume two jato vandal like straight sweet soul and straight like what is this well that was all music that i bought from robert ramos and sal you know so i ended up making my volume two with it so i ended up meeting sal and uh, we were a trio of friends, right? So Robert's, uh, at this point in time, Robert is now having a fallout with Alan Beck and the whole underground oldies thing. Sal is on his second volume of City of Angels. I'm on my second volume of Lost and Found. And um, we're doing good, you know. Um, we didn't do it for money, but you know, we're, we're, we're just putting it out there. And these record stores are like, hey man, we'll pay you like eight, nine bucks a CD. Uh, I'll take a hundred of them, you know, we were, I remember going to Sounds of Music, Norlock Records, by the way, rest in peace to Richard Sneed, you know, fuck, so, such a tragic news to hear, he just recently passed away, uh, he could vouch for everything I'm saying, but he's no longer with us, um, but yeah, you know, I was supplying Norlock Records, a one-stop distribution in downtown LA, long story short, man, I'm selling thousands of units of CDs at seven bucks a pop wholesale every month like i remember not that i'm bringing money involved but i remember like having so much money in my pocket but I, that money was also buying we're buying records um you know i'm like 19 20 years old now at this point in time and uh you know i'm starting my own family i remember buying like stupid paintings leather couches throwing fucking crazy ass barbecues you know just you know supplying the whole spread because i had the money so um because we were selling we were doing that good selling records so anyhow robert um robert left itp records and he kind of calls us calls me up and goes, hey george i've been thinking man i've been thinking if me you and sal get together i want to start my own record label i'm like yeah like you know we were from we were homies I'm like yeah bro i'm with it like what's up he goes, it's going to cost about 10 grand to get it going. But if me, you and Sal could kick it off and we go three ways, you know, like 3,300 bucks a pop, uh, we could start this record label and I could get it going because he knew the right people in the right places, you know, because he's been hanging around the industry. He goes, are you in? I'm like, I'm in. Um, he hits up Sal. Hey, um, I left Underground Oldies or, or, they or they left me. I don't know, whatever it was. Basically, it was a fallout. But I want to start my own label. 
let's put our money up and let's come up with something. He goes, I remember him telling me though, and he told Sal, he goes, but the minute we, we become business partners and we go three way on this label, he goes, you got to stop doing your CDs and Sal, you got to stop doing your CDs. And we're all going to come together and we're all going to focus on these CDs that we're about to unleash. So I go to Robert's pad and I, I, I instead of 30 to 100, I just gave him 3,500. Remember, I, I, as a paper, he gave me a paper receipt, he handwritten it. I, Robert Ramos, received $3,500 from George Miller Jr. in efforts to help start a label, blah, 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 blah. Robert hits me up. I go to his pad. He goes, hey, man, come over to my house. And like, let's 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 brainstorm. Let's try to come up with a, a name for this label and, and what we're going to do, what our next move is. I remember we went, to, we went to Circuit City, and with my portion of the money, we bought a computer, an e-machine. I'll never forget it. It was a fucking e-machine, and he bought it. And that was going to be the company computer. Like, okay, George, like, this is the company computer, blah, blah, blah. And then the rest of the money went to the legalities of starting the record label. Now we just had to come up with a name. So me and Robert are in the front of this house in Pico Rivera, literally in the front yard, kicking rocks down. And he liked the name of the CD I had called The Lost and Found. He goes, man, I really like that name you got, Lost and Found. Like, I would really like to like just just keep it rolling with that, but I don't want to copy that. You know, that's like, I just want it to be totally different, but I like the name Lost and Found. I'm like, yeah, like, you know, like, um, he was, I really like the artwork on it too, man. Like what you got uh, for the front cover looks really, really, really dope. It was really eye-catching back then, you know, for that time era. It was really eye-catching. It really did well. Uh, so he was already thinking business-wise. He already knew you had to have a really catchy cover. We were kicking around a bunch of different names, and then we finally got to the lost and found. Uh, I don't know, lost this, lost something this, and then we're kicking around with all these names. And I don't know who said it first. I can't remember if it was me who uttered it or if it was Robert. But the, the word uttered out, uh, lost soul, lost soul, lost soul oldies, lost soul, yeah, lost soul. And we were like, yeah, lost soul oldies. That sounds dope. Like, fuck yeah, lost soul oldies. And I remember he's like, okay, uh, what's the name of the record label? And like simultaneous, we're like, lost soul records. And uh, simultaneously, we kind of like said it at the same time. So, okay, like it's gonna lost so oldies and lost so records. That's it. He called Sal. Sal was on board. And um, that was the birth of lost so records and lost so oldies. Mm-hmm.